Hello and welcome in section 2, bagging algorithms, also called bootstrap aggregation. In this video, we will be learn how to use bag decision trees algorithm. But before we get into that, let's just briefly define what we mean by bagging algorithm. So the first thing that the bagging algorithm actually does is that it splits data set into smaller samples. And then it trains model and on each sample and then make predictions using this trained model using a new sample. And then it averages out predictions from each model. Bagging can be used for both classification and regression problems. In our code examples, we are using classification. And in general, you can use bagging with what we call high variance algorithms. And that means that those are algorithms that usually uh, works great when they learned on a training data set, but they're not generalizing enough on the new data. So they learn some patterns from the training data, but when you show to this algorithm a totally new data set, they're usually not that good at generalizing. And this is also called overfitting. And commonly we use bagging with decision trees, and yeah, and decision trees really are great for those kind of algorithms. And let's talk a little bit about evaluating model skills or performance. So usually in a lot of examples, um, the most popular method of doing that is using train test validation split. So you basically split your data set into two subsets or three subsets, depending if you are using validation split as well. And you are you know trying to validate it uh, or trying to verify the generalization power of an algorithm on those data sets. And this is usually a very um, kind of a easy to understand and implement way of evaluating models performance. But uh, the more accurate method is what we call k-fold cross validation. And in our code examples, we'll be using tenfold cross validation. And this is because we have a relatively small data set and we can afford this kind of a little bit more resource consuming method of validation. Also, the reason behind that is scikit-learn library that we'll be using allows us to do that really easily. So let's now have a look at our code for this particular algorithm. We'll be working with algorithms step by step. So let's first open a terminal. The first step is to go to the source directory for this section, and you can have it located in a different places, you know, depending where you've downloaded the code examples. And in my case, this is in desktop, I'm boosting Python, and we are in section two, source. And when we show what's inside the directory, we have a couple of directories that I explained near the end of the section. But what we want to do is that we want to run a new Jupyter Notebook. And keep in mind that all of the examples that we are doing here, you can find in BP underscore notebooks. Uh, so you can copy those examples into the source directory if you want to, or you can go through those code examples step by step with me right now. And also keep in mind that what we're basically doing is that we are translating the code from BP directory, uh, which is a just normal Python code for each of those algorithms. And we do it using notebook just to make sure that we are going through each piece of code uh, step by step. So let's open a new Jupyter notebook, Jupyter notebook. And keep in mind that you can create those notebooks and everywhere, uh, anywhere you want. But for simplicity, we'll do that in our source directory for this section. This is because we don't want to, you know, get too detailed with importing the necessary modules, right? So we make it really simple when you work in a source directory, when you have all of the data and also the code that we need, it makes it easy to actually work with those notebooks. And, you know, you'll see why in a moment, but let's first click on new and then choose Python 3. 
And the first thing that we want to do is that, you know, perhaps you want to name your notebook in some way that you can identify what we are working on in this particular notebook. This is section two, so as to video one, backed decision trees. And, you know, feel free to name it as you want. Just make sure that we can identify later on this notebook, you know, what it's all about. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is that we want to import the get data function since we throw that in section one. And in pretty much every piece of code, we'll use this function just to make it all simple and not reinventing the wheel, right? So we can import this function from the BP package that it's located inside the source directory for this section. So let's do that. Let's import get data function first. So from BP, which is our you know, main package directory when we keep all of the code. And then section one, video five, data. So we've covered the get data function step by step in section one, video five. And we want to import get underscore data. And as you probably remember from section one, get data returns our x and y so our input and also output values but we'll talk about that in a moment the next step is that we need to first since we are working with decision trees we need to import those to be exact classifier because we are working with classification problems so now we want to import a decision tree classifier and all those decision trees, also the regressors are located in sqlearn tree. So let's do that. So from sqlearn tree, import decision tree classifier. And this is our single decision tree, right? So now we want to import and the actual bagging classifier that will be using the single decision tree to train and then to do the prediction on all of the models, right? So the next step is to actually import the debugging classifier. So this is located in sqlearn ensemble package. And we want to import debugging classifier. Okay, so right now we have a single decision tree and we have also banging classifier that can use this tree, this decision tree. And also we have, you know, the function that returns the data for us. The last step is that we want to evaluate the performance of those models. And in each example, we'll compare the performance or model skill will compare the single decision tree to actually a back decision tree. So we'll compare the performance of those two um, algorithms, single decision tree and also back decision tree. So many decision trees to be, you know, to make it simple. So as I said, we are using tenfold cross validation to do that. And sqlearn allows us to do that really simply. So it's all located in sqlearn model selection and we want to import cross val score okay now we are pretty much have everything we need to actually build back decision trees but before we get into that we also need to specify a number or random seed and this is useful because we want to, um, you know, make sure that we can reproduce those results that we run. Usually we want to, you know, run in a, a script and want to get the same results. So that's why we want to fix a seed. And number random seed is pretty much just a number that we choose and we just use in initializing all of those tools that we've just imported or most of the tools are mainly classifiers. So let's 
create seed equal to one to three, just to keep it simple. Okay, so now we are ready to do some work. The first thing to do is to get the data. So we want to get our X and Y from get data. Okay, we can also check what's inside X and Y. That's fine. So in our X, we have our input values. Those are the medical variables. And in Y, we have just a, a 0, 1, depending if we have a patient with no diabetes or with diabetes, right? So once we've got our data, it's time to first initialize our single decision tree. So let's create a new variable, DTC. This is our decision tree. Initialize our decision tree classifier. And here we want to specify our random seed. By using a this, the same number of random seed for uh, all of our classification initialization, we just make sure that we can reproduce the results. Okay. And once we created the single decision tree, we can now create the back decision tree. So let's do that. So this will be our main model and bagging classifier. And here we have to provide what model do we want to use as inside our bagging classifier. And of course, we want to use our single decision tree. So we have to provide base estimator equal to DTC. Then we have to specify how many of those models we want to use, right? Because as I've explained in the presentation, beginning of this video, bagging works by creating or splitting data into multiple parts and trained a lot of models on those parts and then do the predictions and then the averaging out the results. So let's choose the number of models that we want to use to 100. So we have to provide n estimators. And of course, like pretty much everything in machine learning, you know, you do a lot of testing to actually come up with those optimal values. And you now 100 is pretty standard value that doesn't really take a lot of time to train. And you have to consider that as well. And for our demonstration and educational purposes is perfect. Okay, the last thing that we have to provide is again, random state or random number. This will be our seed. Okay, so it seems that we've got our model. And now we have to train both of those on our, um, on our data. So let's create results DTC. This will hold our results for our single decision tree. And we simply run fit method on a model that we've initialized with X and Y. And let's do the same for our main model, which is the back decision trees. Okay. The next step is to basically just um, get the performance metrics for those models and compare them to each other. So we can do the tenfold cross validation really, really easily using the cross val score function. So let's do that. So let's start with validating a single decision tree. So k fold DTC cross val score. So remember we've imported that at the beginning. And this function is responsible for doing the cross validation. And we have to provide the, the model that we want to use. So this will be our DTC, then the data we want to do the validation on and how many folds we want to use. And we provide number 10 
I won't go into details what the fold means, you can look it up. But basically, the more folds we have, the, the more thorough the validation is. But 10 is pretty standard number. And with big data sets, it takes a lot of time to do those validation. But with our data set, which is relatively small, just fine. Let's run that. And let's do the same with our model. And model x, y, c, v, 10. As you can see, we can still see a little bit of star inside the square brackets. It means that the, you know, the code is running. So it took quite a lot of time to do that on our model since we have, you know, this model is more complex. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do is that we want to compare the results from both of those uh, validations. And we can, you know, pretty easily do that if you want to get the percentages which is more intuitive way of going about it. The first one, we'll have to get the actual values of those validation from the variables. So kfold DTC, and we want to run a mean method on that. And this will give us a, a score. And this is the average performance of our model over all of the uh, folds or, you know, parts of the validation. And I can do the same with our uh, main model. And we can also convert that into the percentages. So you know, we simply have to just multiply that by 100, right? So in this case, we can say that in case of the single decision trees, our validation is 66% or model accuracy to be specific and to be exact. In case of a single decision tree, we've got the 66% of accuracy in case of our bag decision trees. So our bagging algorithm using a single decision tree or 100 decision tree, we've got the 72% accuracy. So in this particular case, the bagging much more effective than a single decision tree. 